Good day, folks. Uh, this is Greg Judy at uh, Greg Judy Regenerative Rancher uh, YouTube channel. And welcome for those of you all new that haven't been to the channel before. If you like what you see today, hit that subscribe button on the way out. Maybe the like. I'd appreciate it. And uh, thank you all. This is uh, getting toward the end of March, so we're thinking about getting out on the land. You know, the, the weather's getting nice now. And I get a, I'm getting a lot of people that have bought land already. And it may be a, a two-acre plot. It may be a five-acre plot. Uh, I got a guy the other day, you know, he had a couple hundred acres he just kind of bought to put some money into. Uh, never thought too much about raising food on it until he started bouncing into my YouTube channel. He's like, you know, I think I can do some of that. There's a lot of questions out there. So for those of you all that had a nest egg, Maybe you've already bought a farm, whether it's five acres, 10, 20, you know, whatever. Uh, you've, already got the, you've already got the land, okay? Uh, you're probably not making payments on it. You just bought it, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. I tell people land's a pretty good investment thing for to buy it. But starting out for some young folks that don't have a lot of money, I really, really prefer leasing. It's just the way to go. And then when you get some money generated from your livestock sales and such, if you want to buy some land later on, you can do that. And there's no, I don't have a problem with that at all. I just don't want you to be bank. I don't want the bank in your business your whole life. Okay. Be subjected to making that payment and you just never get out from underneath that. Uh, it doesn't need to be that way. So what we're going to talk about today, I've had a lot of people ask me, well, Greg, I've got the farm, but I really don't know what to look for on the farm before I can bring livestock on it. In other words, what do I need to do? Good question. The very first thing that I would do if I had a piece of ground, in other words, you've already owned it, you bought it, maybe it's not intentionally just walking on it. But I'm saying, you know, <laughs> why can't we raise some food on it? You know, this was grown by sunlight. Sunlight and grass. That's going to be our dinner tonight. That's a, a beef Kansas City strip, okay? That was all grown, all that marbling and that fat in there. That was all grown by sunlight and green blades of grass and clover. I didn't break the soil up. I didn't use a, a fossil fuel building tractor to turn the soil over or to disc it, put chemicals on the ground. No! This is a symbiosis between the grazing ruminant animal that has all these multiple stomachs, they can eat grass and break it down and turn it into food to feed your family. How important is that? Well, it's very important. We're going through a pretty tough time right now in the United States. The whole world is, for that matter. This virus thing. How important is good food? Security of having food in your freezer right now. I mean, you go to the meat shelf and it's bare. What are you going to feed your family? Yeah. Um, it's sustainable. It's sustainable. We can do it on the land you already own. So that's why a lot of these people are like, wait a minute. I've got some land out here. I just don't know how to get the animals on. So we're going to talk about that today. It's a great topic. So number one thing that I would do when I get on a piece of ground is, first of all, is for liability get you a good perimeter fence around there a good perimeter fence and that can be that if you've got barbed wire that's already there and it's decent you can beef that up just by going in and adding some more barbed wire on the weak spots adding a few steel posts or if your fence is just crap it's all laying down in the dirt in other words it's just rusted away the posts are rotted off you don't have any fence well don't go out and get animals don't do that and don't get out in a hurry and put up a bunch of temporary fence and just put animals in there. Because what if those animals get out of that temporary fence? In other words, you don't have a really good structure fence on your perimeter. They're going to be on your neighbors. They're going to be out in the middle of that flat top. Somebody's going to hit them. Or worse than that, you know, somebody could get hurt. Somebody could get hurt. And you don't want to do that. It's not fair to the animals. And it's not fair to the person that hits them. That's your fault. You brought animals in before you were ready to receive them. Okay, don't do that. Get you a good fence, whether it's electric high tensile, which is I highly recommend. 
you know, if you build a five to six strand high tensile fence and get a good energizer, folks, it is the most economical way to build fence by far. Can't even compete with, I mean, steel woven wire, it's a great fence, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's impenetrable, a good woven wire fence, but it's gonna cost you, it's gonna cost you a ton of money to build. You can use high tensile wire, get your animals trained to electricity, and you're not going to have any trouble. You're just not. The steers, I'm sorry, not the steers, our bull herd. we got 60 bulls up here in the herd. This morning we went up there and we moved them. And we had a wire going across the paddy. And, I mean, they're all just standing there looking at that wire. And I'm, I, told, I told my wife, I said, that wire's not even on. Those bulls thought it was on. Because the last time they touched it, they got the stuffing knocked out of them. That's what we're talking about. Animals that are trained and moved. And another thing, those bulls weren't hungry. They knew we were going to move them. Animals don't get out if they're moved. They don't need to because you're going to move them onto a fresh piece of grass. And they know that. Now we move our animals twice a day. You don't have to do that starting out. you can, You got to make it uh, work with your work schedule in town or, or maybe your personal life. Maybe the farm is a, a ways away from you. We, we can make that work. We can make that work. So you got to get a good perimeter fan. High tensile wire, electrified with a good charger, good post. Don't use steel post. Absolutely no steel post in your electric fencing system. Zero. Because when you got a short, by God, it's going to be at those steel posts. Fiberglass or timeless, that's what we use. I can't get a hold of a good fiberglass line post. We, we have some really nice corner posts now. Great big ones, okay? We've got tons of them. We sell fiberglass corner posts. But the best posts you can get for your perimeter are the timeless. 20-year warranty, they break. You don't have to paint them. You don't have to drill them. By God, they're good posts. And if a tree falls on it, they'll go over to the ground. By gosh, they'll pop back up when you cut the tree off the fence. If you have a tree fall on a woven wire or a barbed wire fence, man, you're out there for hours trying to get that dude fixed. It's not that way with high tensile. So animals, I tell people, a good high tensile electric fence on the perimeter, it's a psychological fence. Animals ain't, they're, they're just not going to mess with it. They're not. They're not going to mess with it. Because they're not hungry. Because you're moving them, right? Okay, so now we've got our fencing covered on the perimeter. The next thing I would do is I would look at my water. When you bought that farm... Or acreage, you probably got some water up around your house. You may have a hydrant. Um, maybe you've got a pond out there. Work with what you have first and then kind of learn your ropes with that, how to get the animals to the water. We always start at the water and move our grazing away from that. So I'm going to look at getting some water points out there. Now, you don't have to go out and bankrupt yourself. There's a really cheap way to get water just to kind of learn your farm. It's not going to cost you a lot of money. And that is with the Plassen Quick Couplers. They're called Plassen Quick Couplers. I'll, I'll just write it out here. So they're called Plassen Quick Couplers. Okay. Plassen Quick Couplers. You can buy those for $14. $14. Get them at PowerFlex Fence Company. Plassen Quick Couplers. You can go out and get a roll of polyethylene pipe at Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards, whatever. Get you a, a, They sell it. Well, you can get it in 1,000 foot rolls. Not at Menards, but PowerFlex carries it, I know, in 500 foot rolls. Anyway, you can roll that out on your land, and I would prefer PowerFlex's uh, polyethylene pipe. It's a lot better pipe. It's very durable. Put those cut couplers anywhere you need water. Then just hook it up to your hydrant up in your yard. If you've got a hydrant out there, just hook it up to your hydrant. Now you've got water across your whole farm, pressurized. I'm not talking about gravity. I'm talking about pressure. When you turn that hydrant on, it's going to shoot water. And I would go... You know, if you don't have that far to go, let's say not over, oh gosh, uh, 14 to 1,600 feet. I've got a farm over, it's got 1,800 feet on it. Three quarter inch. That's what it is. Three quarter inch polyethylene. 
and I've got one, two, three, four. I've got four couplers on that, about every 400 feet. Folks, I've got pressure. I've got about 60 PSI on that. When you plug that dude in, that's the way it is. There's a male that plugs down into the female. When it does, when you do that, this part's hooked to your, your water tank. You got instant water. So you gotta have water. That's what I'd be looking for. Make sure you have some water out there. And in the last, the last case scenario that I would use, if I didn't have water, you could put a tank out there and carry water in the back of your pickup and you know have a valve on it and run it into a tank for your animals. Now you can do that when you have a few. But if you've got 30, 40, 50, 60 animals, boy, you're going to get tired of that really quick. You really are. Um, so try and get some way to get pressurized water out there or gravity. If you have a big holding tank up here, you can use gravity to push water across your farm. But if you do, you're going to want to use something bigger than a three-quarter inch pipe because the pipe friction, that's what kills you. So when you go from an inch and a half to an inch and a quarter, just with gravity, it's going to double the amount of water you get. Did you hear that? From inch and a half to inch and a quarter, it's going to double the amount of water that you can push through that pipe. And that's because that quarter inch you're getting bigger, it's out on the outside where you have more volume. It's pipe friction. That's what kills you on water distribution. Pressure, you can push water a long ways with pressure, depending on how much your pressure tank is and stuff like that. Um, so now we've got water. We've covered our fence on the perimeter and the start out. Uh, excuse me a minute. I would use one of these. This is a geared, this is a geared reel. The best one made in the world, which is the Terragate. I love the Terragate reels. Um, they actually, <laughs> I'm going to give a plug. They use two of my suggestions. Um, they put a, a nice little round bolt here, which used to be a hex head bolt. It would get caught on the wires you're rolling it up. And they put keepers. I told them these little plugs would come out and this would come off. Now they've got keepers on here, they can't come off. So it's a heck of a real terrigate. Okay, so three to one. Every time you spin it, it spins three times. And I do use poly braid. I don't use poly bar. I like this stuff at Powerflex. Um, the the nine strand it's got six steel filaments in it and three copper it's a heck of a poly braid um so you've got some reels and get you some some temporary step in post and now you can move the animals so before i brought animals on i'd want to be able to move them you don't want to give them the whole let's say you got 40 acres and you brought let's say 10 cows on there you don't want to give them that whole 40 acres you want to give them maybe two acres or an acre and start moving them around that farm because what's going to happen is by the time you move around that farm, the grass is going to be recovered when you come back. And that's what I talk about in my videos. You can go back and look at a lot of the stuff that I talk about on that. The other thing that I would look at, you need a way to catch those animals. Or if you're buying animals that aren't broke to hot wire, you need a corral or, or some, some kind of panels you can put your animals in and then run a hot wire on the inside of that. Okay, and that way you're going to train those animals to respect hot water. They're going to get shot within five minutes. And within about a day of them reaching out and touching that wire, those animals are broke pretty darn well. Then you can let them out on your farm, they're going to stay in. But if you just go buy some animals and kick them out on your farm, and they've never seen a hot water, they're going to be, they're going, to be going through your fence like it's um, dental floss. <laughs> they're not going to respect that wire. They're going to get shocked, but they don't know what it was that shocked them. They're going to hit the next one and the next one. So don't do that. You have to have animals trained. So you got to have a secure pin that'll hold them, preferably steel, a woven wire, or maybe five strand barb, whatever. Then run you a wire on the inside of that when they bump into it. And I like to tie aluminum cans onto it. <laughs> aluminum can, they reach out and do that. They reach out and lick it. When a wet cow tongue hits a woman in a can, she's trained. <laughs> it sounds like a 22 rifle going off on a good charger. Don't skimp on your chargers. Get a good one. Stafix, um, Stafix Gallagher makes a good one. There's some good ones out there. High voltage, low impedance. Cyclops, that's what I showed you. Cyclops, that's a good one. Um, so yeah, you got your piece of ground here, folks. Um, 
you've got your perimeter for now. We've, we've covered moving the animals. We've covered the water distribution. And you've got a crowd. You trained them in. Well, that crowd's going to come in pretty handy. What if you've got to catch an animal? To take it to have this done. You know, cut it up into meat. Or maybe uh, you've got to catch one to treat it. It's got a, a piece of wire wrapped around its foot or whatever. You've got to be able to catch your animals. And so it's pretty nice to have a head catch. Now, you don't you don't need it at the very start. I mean, I didn't when I first started. I didn't have money to buy a head catch. So I had a way to catch them, though. I'd get them up in the crowd, and then I'd call the vet, and the vet has a head catch they bring. It hooks behind the pickup, and they would come out, and let's say we had a, a heifer that I was custom grazing. Somebody else's cow was taken care of, and the feet were sticking out of a calf. We had to help her get the calf out. The vet would bring a head catch. And what that does, it, it holds the animal secure so she doesn't get hurt. And she doesn't hurt you. You can get the calf out and whatever. Um, but a head catch is pretty nice down the road. Uh, we, we do use a, a bander. We band all of our bulls. Well, you can't just walk out of the pasture and band the bull. you got to be able to hold him. So we use a head catch for that. Um, if we have a cow that loses an ear tag, we, we try and keep ear tags in all of our cows. We've got to put her in a head catch and put a new ear tag in her, stuff like that. But uh, it's pretty nice to have. I think I've covered basically what to look for before you bring animals on. Good fence. Oh, when you go buy your animals, make sure you don't get one that's got a high head and he's looking at you like that. That animal's scared of you. You bring it on the farm, it's probably going to run through your fence. You may never see that animal again. Don't use high-headed animal. When you walk into animals, they shouldn't pay any attention to you. Those are the kind of animals you want. It may be hard to find those kind, but try and find an animal that's not real spooky. You bring a bunch of spooky animals onto your farm, and you walk into that pasture, and they take off running, getting away from you, you've got your work cut out for you. You're going to have to tame those animals down, and the way to do that, you got to spend time with them. Get your five-gallon bucket. Go out in that pin, you train them to hot wire in, whether it's a quarter acre or 100, 100, 100 feet, whatever. Go out there and sit on that bucket. Spend some time with those animals. Let them know that you're not a booger man. You're not going to kill them. You're not going to hurt them. And move that bucket around. Make them move off from you. And they'll finally get used to you. And they won't even pay any attention to you. I used to do that with stalker calves. Folks, in our heyday, uh, Jan and I were running around 1,500 stalker calves a year. We got some pretty wild animals. And the first thing I did is I'd go out in those calves and I would just sit with them. And when they moved off, I'd get my bucket and I'd go on down the fence a little bit and I'd sit down again. I wanted to stay close enough to them that they could get pressure away from it to relieve the pressure. But I wanted them to get used to me. And within about two weeks, I could move those calves anywhere I wanted to move them. Because they got used to me. They trusted me. In other words, I was a good person. I wasn't going to stick them in the neck with a needle. I'm not going to lasso them. I'm not going to stick a dog on them. I'm a good person. And once those animals trust you, you you're in high cotton, man. You're going to do just fine. So with that, uh, I just want to sign off. I think I've covered that pretty well. Um, I think there's a, there's a great opportunity. For, there's a lot of people living on the land that could be doing this. <laughs> Raising your own food. Buy you a freezer. Put your beef in there. Times get lean. You can feed yourself, maybe your kids, your grandchildren, your parents. Off of grass. How cool is that? You don't need to be growing grain to feed them. Animals are, these are ruminants. They're herbivores. That's why they got these multiple stomachs to chew up this grass that you and I have starved to death. We can eat it till we fall over and die, but an animal can eat that. A ruminant. And turn it into a valuable protein to feed your family. How cool is that? Doesn't get any better. So with that, I think I'm going to end this. And uh, thank you all for the, the new ones that have come to the channel. Hit that subscribe button on the way out. And to go by our website, greenpasturesfarm.net. These are my two books, Comeback Farms and No Risk Ranching. These both cover everything that we've talked about today. Um, there's a lot of good grazing tips in here, folks. I try and share with you exactly what has worked and what hasn't worked. And, you know, I want you all to be as successful as we have been. And I tell you what, if you will go forward with passion and you love what you're doing, 
Folks, you're going to be successful. You can't help it. You're going to be successful. Stay away from the naysayers. Keep your chin up. Do something positive every single day. Every single day. Do something positive. Okay? You can't control what's going on in this crazy world right now with this virus. But you know, you can control your own emotions and yourself. Get out, do, get out on the land. Take a walk. Take your wife with you. Give her a kiss. Tell her you love her. And, you know, go forward. All right? We'll see you all down the road.